I'm sitting here with the number one player of all high schools in the country, Corey Foreman. We're at Jack Rabbit uh, Boxing Gym, and this is the MLK Be the Change series. I just want to say, first of all, I'm a big fan. We played the same position, so I've watched you. I've watched you annihilate not only a lot of schools, but my school, Long Beach Poly. So I want to say, first of all, I'm a big fan, and thanks for coming on and, and sitting down to have a conversation with me. Pleasure, pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You, uh, I mean, you looked apart, man, and you've definitely done what you need to do on the field and in the classroom. I want to say, first of all, congratulations on that. When did you fall in love with, with football? I would say I fell in love with football back when I was in sixth, sixth grade, or no, not sixth grade, I'm gonna say fifth, fifth grade. That's when it was really for real to me because that's when I started watching highlight tapes and other things like, to be honest, the person who got me into the game was Troy Palomalu. Um, Troy, I see a love. Yeah, I started, <laughs> I started watching his film back when I was playing, or baseball, back when I was swinging a bat, back when I was playing basketball, just other things like that, and lacrosse as well. I wasn't really into like, okay, what's going to be my sport going into high school? And uh, so I was just watching football and then boom, came Troy Palomalu's highlight tape. And ever since then, and just the way he was laying the boom on the field, it was like, dang, I wanted to do that. Like, I, I want to be that monster. I want to be respected when I put pads on or when I put a helmet on. I'm like, okay, that's Corey. Now we know where he's at. Like, I don't know, it's just the change that he brought to the game. Yes. The impact player he was, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I want to be. And so, I mean, ever since then, it's just been that quick. A lot of young men and women, for that matter, don't have that mindset. A lot of them get corralled and enticed by the things that are going on in the neighborhood, especially in inner city areas. Um, when you, when you, when you, like we're around MLK Day, like Martin Luther King, when you, when you hear the speeches, when you see some of the old things that went on, um, you're watching it on TV, um, and all the things that people of color have went through to pave the way for you to be able to go to a, a, a university like Southern Cal, or for you to be able to do certain things. Um, how has that influenced you as a young man? It's influenced me because I know that right now I'm not able to control my heartbeat and I thank God for everything he's been able to do. So I thank him for installing the knowledge and the people back in the day to set the standard that they have for right now and set the paved way and the foundation for everyone else so far being. I want to be that next change. I want to be the next generation. I want to be the next platform that somebody else can feed off of one day. And the change that they have brought into the world and society, you know, it's been crazy and it's been crazy that everybody has to deal with the way we've been dealing with it. But, um, Definitely, I would say it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be in this day and era right. And right now, and I'm thankful for everyone and everybody that's put me in this situation as well as my ancestors and everyone else. That's Hit on that. You said you want to be the change. You said that what's going on, um, not all, not not everything, but a lot that's gone on lately is crazy. Um, we're talking about the police brutality. We talk about the systematic uh, racism. You're talking about people being treated unfairly. Um, of course, I'm sure you were aware of the George Floyd thing that happened, Breonna Taylor and all that. Um, it seemed like the young kids, the young um, superstars, whether in basketball, sports, or entertainment, they use their platforms. You mentioned using your platform. They use their, their platforms to make change and to speak out. And it made a difference. How important was that for you to see your peers and people maybe you listen to and watch and look up to use their platforms um, for something different outside of what benefits them? So definitely I would say me looking into my idols like in other people like LeBron or other people like even Kobe mentality, like just stuff like that and how they had a big influence in the world we live in today and how they are so up notch with the society and MLK and all of this riots that's been going on, you know, it's sad. And I thank everybody for the position that they have put me in as well. And, uh, you know, it's been able to show me that to use my platform based off of what I've been able to do. Once again, I thank God for putting me in this position and this day and there and being able to sit right here and talk to you about what I'm talking to you about. But, um, yeah, I mean, just the fact that everything that's going on today, my platform, me being the number one player in the country, I feel like I have all eyes on me. So if I'm talking about what should be talked about as in the change, as in Police brutality shouldn't be what it is right now, and everybody should be, you know, coming to peace and coming as one. But at the end of the day, if there is nobody speaking about it and there's no change trying to be processed, nothing will ever happen. 
So me abusing my platform, doing the best I can to provide, and like I'm saying right now, speak to you about this, it's a blessing, and I hope everybody else is taking into consideration of this conversation. Now, um, you mentioned the police brutality and all those different things. Your father is in law enforcement, and like I have friends in law enforcement, and what I tell people, everybody in law enforcement is not bad, because that's, that's the perception to a lot of people because of what they see on TV and they may not experience it or live in an area where they've come across some of that. Um, what do you say to those people who was raised by a strong black man in law enforcement who taught you um, the values of life and doing things the right way and um, helped build you to be what you are today? It's a blessing because not everybody has a parent in the position that I am right now. And, uh, you know, just for him to not have a father right now, him to install everything he has right now into me and my two other brothers, it's a blessing. You know? I mean, it's, I'm thankful for the position I am right now. And I know it wouldn't be without God with who I am right now. And for him to be able to wake up every single day and push me and my brothers with the, the knowledge and the system he can, every single day he goes to work, he sees something new, he'll come back and tell us what not to do. We need that and that's what everybody should need. So when I go out and I hang out with my friends and I pick up the knowledge and the game from my pops, I try and install it into the people I want to run my circle. Two or three years from, from now, what is the most important thing you want people to think about when they say Corey Foreman? He left college with his degree and he finished everything he, he was supposed to do and maintained everything he was supposed to accomplish at the University of Southern California. He left the University of Southern California with as many awards as possible, the Heisman Trophy as a defensive end. Ooh, you're going to be the first one to get it as a, as a defense? They don't like to give it to the defenders, you know that, right? Okay. You'd be the first. I remember, remember we said that, all right? When you make it to a certain level and you've done everything the right way, it's, it's, it's so important that you take everything that you're saying and just be you and come back to the neighborhood, come back to these young kids and give them the gold, give them the message because you, you, you're on a whole nother level as far as maturity and all the things, being articulate and, and knowing what you want and where you want to go. But we do have a lot of young men and young ladies that are confused and they need to listen and hear people like yourself and say, he's done it. He comes from where I come from. He was raised on my block or down the street. His father looks like my father. His mom looks like my mom. Our brothers played together. So if you had the opportunity to do it and do it the right way and you didn't get distracted, then you should always just keep it back there. You know, it's not about money, it's not about anything else. When you hear the word legend, what comes to mind? Someone who's made every single right decision and who's been to where they had to be based off of everything they have done to get there. And uh, I feel like that's somebody who's uplifted and done the best they can to show, show up every single day at work and show up every single day of practice, right. every single situation as the best. And the legend can only go down to somebody who's been there and done that and who succeeded at the top level. And to succeed at the top level, you gotta take care of X, Y, and Z, the little things first. And so to get at the top level and to become a legend, you gotta do the best you can to become a king first. And to become a king, you gotta set your throne, set your destination. And without that, you will not become a legend. But at the end of the day, if you set your throne in a foundation and you keep going with what you want to do, you're gonna be a legend one day. Yes or no, at the end of the day, will they call you a legend? Yes, sir. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's dope.